So where does Linux fit into this whole network automation picture? Let's talk about it. If you are a network engineer and you've been primarily focused on the command line up to this point in your career, uh, there, there's a decent chance that your work machine is a Windows machine, right? There's even a decent chance that you don't know much about Linux at all, that you've never touched Linux. That's okay. But let me tell you, in the network automation world, you're going to get exposed to Linux. And pretty quickly, there's a few reasons why. Let's talk about the big one first. So the first and most obvious reason that you would want to learn Linux if you're trying to get into the network automation world is that these run Linux, or some form of it. These, they're Juniper devices, they actually run FreeBSD, which looks and feels a lot like Linux. All the same Linux commands, or most of the same Linux commands, work on these devices. So when you want to upgrade your operating system or the version of Junos that's running on a Juniper device, you'll need to know all the commands to mount a USB thumb drive onto the file system. This is no different from a Nexus device or a iOS XE device. They all are running some variant of Linux so that they can expose other services like HTTP endpoints. If you're running a REST API on these devices, they're running some form of web server so that it can expose that kind of data. I mean, if you watch that Juniper video, the, the reason, the, the YouTube video that I made that's why you should check out the Juniper Network Automation course, um, you saw when I SSH'd into it, it returned to me a Tesla message. See, Tesla, when they sold their switch on eBay, they thought they, they factory defaulted it, but they factory defaulted the Juniper operating system portion of it not the free BSD portion of it. So when I logged in, I got Linux returning to me or free BSD returning to me a message of the day. And I was able to find that because I knew enough Linux commands or free BSD commands to navigate the file system into the message of the day section. And I could actually read the file that they had configured to do that. So knowing and understanding Linux is going to be a big part of working in network automation because that's what our devices are running these days. Even though you'll still be able to access the same old command line that you're used to, uh, you'll have additional functionalities that are built into these boxes now. Things like Python. Python runs on these devices, so you can deploy your Python scripts directly to it as long as you know the right commands. You can run applications themselves on these devices. Why not? I mean, it's it's all Linux, right? But the other reason that you really want to check out Linux in a network automation world is that software developers for years now have embraced Linux. They love the fact that it's lightweight and it's open source, that they can deploy code or apps directly to these Linux devices. It scales really, really well because it's so lightweight. I mean, think about Docker and containers for a second. Those were really embraced by Linux because the kernel, the OS, that can run those apps is so itty bitty. And that's why Windows is coming up with things like Nano Server to compete with it. But Linux has been in this game for a long time. So if you're getting into network automation and you're going to be writing scripts or code or something, uh, it makes a lot of sense to do it in a Linux environment, especially now that everything is open source, even the Windows stuff. So .NET Core, which is kind of where C Sharp comes from, PowerShell, which is comes from .NET Core, um, all of those work on Linux now. Even the, the IDEs themselves, like Visual Studio or VS Code, those work on Linux. Azure Data Studio, if you want to write SQL code and interact with SQL Server databases, those work on Linux. So everything that you're, you're used to developing on, on a Windows machine, it all works on Linux now. The only preface that I would say is don't wipe out your, you know, your gaming desktop and try and install Linux on that. You may run into some driver issues. But if you've got like a basic laptop or you want to spin up an Ubuntu VM, Linux is a great way to go. And what you're going to find if you follow along in the DevNet course, uh, it's that I primarily use an Ubuntu desktop 1804 machine. And in that machine, I'm using VS Code. We even run PowerShell scripts on that Ubuntu machine. So how much Linux do you need to know? How good at Linux do you need to know? Well, to put this in perspective, uh, the course, the, there's a skill on Linux in the DevNet course. It's about 30 minutes or so. You don't need to know a whole lot. You just need to know the basics of navigating the file system, creating files, updating files, moving files, deleting files, and then how to install packages, which are Linux's version of apps. 
all of that's covered in the DevNet course will get you where you need to go to get started. But if you want to get a jump start on Linux now and learn it as a masterful way, I'd also encourage you to check out Sean Powers' course, which has been up uh, on CBT Nuggets for a long time. He's got he's a master. Sean Powers is the master of Linux, and he has so much content on CBT Nuggets on Linux. Uh, it's just I mean it's where I learned Linux from. It's it's incredible stuff. So check out his Linux Plus content as well as anything else that Sean has because I mean he's really one of the best there is. So. Get started on Linux. It's a lot of fun. It's something new. It's just another tool in your toolbox. It's going to help you get to where you want to go, whether it's in network automation, software development, even infrastructure management. Linux is going to be there for you. All right, y'all. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next one.